All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, today, we were going to talk about some of the features of the new stool test that Microbiome Labs is going to launch. This information is hot off the press. No one else in the country, as far as practitioners, uh, will be receiving this information because it has not launched yet. I wanted to get this information out soon because there's a lot of science and technology that I think we'll need some time to really digest and study. There are some resources out there. I will mention a couple different times. Um, Dr. Robert Knight in Boulder, Colorado has an online course for the microbiome, and he discusses a lot of the terms that may be unfamiliar to you as we go over it in terms of um, alpha and beta type of diversity, uh, metabolomics, uh, informatics, uh, things that the whole industry is now looking at in a in advanced um, high tech knowledge view. So I will review uh, some of the information. Again, this was just presented yesterday. There was a presentation in Huntington Beach, California, in September. That was the first time that uh, customers had seen it. Uh, this will be um, right now just in Texas and Idaho. And then at the end of December, there will be an official rollout for the, the test. So let me um, go over the information and uh, just take some notes on questions that you might have. Because again, this a lot of this information will be new. Okay. The first uh, technical thing we have to discuss is the resolution. So when we're looking at taxonomic ranks um, in the microbiome, you know, if you think back to your, your classes, you know, discussing taxonomy, you go from um, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species, and then strain. The current stool tests stop at species. So the 16S DNA PCR amplification only gives you species information. It does not give you strain information. So the next level of technology, the next generation of sequencing is called whole metagenomic shotgun high resolution analytics with functional conclusions. So that's what we're going to be discussing. The other important point about this and why this resolution is important is because of the functionality. So the example I want to give to you is if you have 16S and you can determine you have a lactobacillus casei and an E. coli, if you don't have the strain information, then you could be missing some very important information. For instance, you can have several strains of lactobacillus casei they wouldn't necessarily be dangerous because different strains are generally used for food manufacturing, for wine, yogurt, and cheeses. But if you don't have the strain information for E. coli, you could be missing a lot of information because not all E. coli strains are benign. There are hemorrhagic pathogenic strains of E. coli. So that's the importance of why you have to get down to the strain specificity. So 16S does not determine the species, oh, it does determine the species, but not the strain. So I have to correct that in my slide. And at that point, you will miss the functionality. And then there's some fine tuning things. Um, 16S amplicon is limited to bacterial species versus whole metagenomic microbiome sequencing, i.e. shotgun, picks up not only bacteria, but also viruses and parasites. The, another point is the type of sampling that has been done um, in the whole industry of stool testing has been very limited, and it's uh, equivalent to looking at just a snapshot versus replicate sampling within uh, the stool itself. And it's 
important is, you know, I give an example. It's like when we used to look at just blood sugar before A1C came along, when you could get kind of a, a full picture of what was going on. That may not be a great example, but I'm, I'm trying to give you what uh, an example of a broader view. And then the other point is on the functionality. And this now will require an entire new database of metabolomics uh, because we'll be able to look at you know, functional indicators that have not been looked at before. And that whole area is being refined as well. So let's drill down into the difference between the 16 S Amplicon versus the shotgun or the whole uh, metagenomic sequencing. Uh, so, you know, cost-wise, in, in the past, it has not been cost-effective to do whole metagenomic sequencing. It was way too expensive. So this company here that we've partnered with, Cosmos ID, has been refining and working on the cost factor to bring it into the market so that it is affordable. The current 16S, it's just been looking at bacteria, so it was made affordable. But if they were to actually look at the multi-kingdom microbiome, um, they would have to use multiple technologies. And at that point, it wouldn't be affordable. And this is talking about nucleic ac uh, acid input. Uh, right now with 16S, um, it's an amplification um, and it's very low. Whereas with WMS, um, you've got a high, much higher degree. The bias uh, is yes, it's very biased because you're just taking a section of, of um, the genome, a, a few genes and amplifying them whereas the WMS will be unbiased. The false positive rate is very high, again, because you've just amplified one gene, um, where the false positive rate is gonna be much lower when you're looking at the whole genome. Uh, kingdoms, we already discussed this. This is uh, limited to bacteria only, where in WMS, you're going to have bacteria, virus, fungi, and proteus. Resolution, uh, again, you're, you're limited to just genus to species, where WMS, you've got subspecies and strains. And here's where they've never been able to give information on, uh, and what we will have information for is antibiotic resistance, virulent factors, plasmids, and bacteriophages. And we'll learn more about why those are important. As I mentioned before too, there's a lot of errors in the whole industry of uh, stool testing. And you know what, what they've had to basically re rework the entire system. Um, metadata was missing and inconsistent, sampling preservation bias, extraction bias, library preparation and NGS bias, reagent and laboratory contamination, lack of controls, uh, as in negative, positive, and spike in controls. So the whole process has been reworked. And that requires a difference in the actual sampling techniques. As I mentioned before, the way we're looking at the microbiome is going to drastically change. And again, I refer you to some of the state-of-the-art laboratories in the country, uh, Dr. Knight's lab in Boulder, Colorado, gives a great online program that discusses alpha and beta diversity. And this test, uh, Biome FX, will, will give you an indication of alpha and beta diversity in your stool test. Now, these are the different functional tests that will be available. They won't be available in the first launch. Uh, we're going to first um, launch a stool test that gives you a high level degree of information, but the next phase two will go into specifics and quantitation of the functional tests. So those are still being worked out, but here's what you're going to be able to see, you know, sometime next year um, in 
uh, sacrolytic and proteolytic fermentation, vitamin, mineral, and digestive enzyme production, histamine versus indole production, hydrogen sulfide, secondary bile salts, i.e. your phase 2.5 indicators, L-carnitine as an anti-inflammatory, serotonin, tryptophan, GABA production, TMAO, indole sulfate, trimethylamine, um, endopropanoic acid, beta-D-glucuronidase, and short-chain fatty acids. This will be the highest uh, level of technology available once all of this is together. It will be a reporting system that will be easy to understand in an index. So immediately you can see, um, is this person in trouble or not? Um, and then drill down into the specifics. So you'll have, like I mentioned, the diversity scores in alpha and beta, pathogenic scores, and res resistome occurrence. Now this technology in itself is state-of-the-art as far as microbial identification and pathogen characteristics. Um, so much so, uh, very well recognized by the FDA. In fact, Cosmos ID has um, uh, entered certain um, challenges. Um, these are to promote high-level technology and have won these awards and highest score for strain level microbiome analysis, top strain profiling and lowest false positives, top clinical strain detection and identification. So this will be a very well recognized technology. So that's um, what I have on this new program, just to stimulate some conversation, uh, hopefully get you researching um, the comparison uh, and asking some questions. We've got a month or so to get all of our questions so that you know what's going to be introduced, how it compares, and um, what you will be able to offer your patients. So I'm gonna now open up the conversation, taking everybody off of mute. Okay. So uh, did anyone see a point in there you wanted reiterated or explained to the best of my ability? Will you have a uh, sample report at some point to view what it looks like? Yes. Yes. Um, that should be coming very soon. Um, they, they gave a limited, like I said, presentation yesterday, um, but I'm still myself going through those, um, trying to make sense of it. And I tried to pull the sample that I thought I had. So let me see if I can find that. But in the meantime, anybody else that has any questions, let me know. Um, the, I have a question about Dr. Knight's class. Are we going to need to take his class in order to be able to interpret the? No, not at all. Um, I plan to provide you all the information that you will need to be able to present and interpret this test. Um, just for those who have a special interest, in microbiome and the latest technology and education, just know that there are resources. Okay. Tracy, would your product line be sort of tailored according to what the test reveals? Would you at some point want to do that, to do a protocol for a client with the different product um, line pr that you guys have? Would that be a part of it or not? Part of the reporting will be recommendations, and they have completely um, sequenced uh, our product as far as me Megaspore. So um, they validate it, as in we will be able to validate other probiotics, and our recommendation then will be those um, products that will benefit the specific patient that has been. Um, tested. And there, there'll also be other product recommendations and food recommendations to help you uh, in the, you know, consulting someone how to, they'll see what's wrong with their microbiome, but then you'll be able to give them direction that um, validated methods to fix it. Okay. 
That sounds good. And I, I didn't hear the beginning because um, unfortunately I was on mute and I didn't realize. Did you give the price of the test? What it's going to be like right now or is that still in there? They have listed it at $299. For the um, one currently that you're launching right now? Correct, correct. And from what I have seen in the comparison of all other stool tests out there, that's the lowest that I've seen for the amount of information that it's going to give. So I think it's very, you know, uh, competitively priced. Um, my concern was just in a new technology like this, I'm, I'm hoping it's not too low <laughs> because I would rather be too high and come down than be too low and have to raise it. But um, we'll, we'll just hope that um, the launch goes well. Uh, and we don't have to make any changes on that. That's always a risk when you're launching new technology. That's exciting though. Um, I was looking currently, um, I, I got Zoomer. Yes. Do you have any 